Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf and I'm here with Ryan Desiato. Hello. Hey. So there's a lot that I want to talk to you about. I mean, a lot. So I apologize if we run over on time. Um, but but first, I want to start with you. You have this amazing voice. You have such a rich tone. And I was listening to all of your songs, and it, your songs are just very soothing. But they speak. Your emotional delivery in each song is so undeniable that I I can't help but think that you are so connected to each one of your songs. So I wanted to not, you know, know about that first. How, how has your songwriting and how has your influences brought you to where you are right now with your, with your lyric writing? Well, um, let me first wipe the smile off my face. <laughs> I really appreciate the, the, the really awesome compliment. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a long answer i think to give the full spectrum of what you like the core of your question but if i had to like give like a, a vague you know overview of mm -hmm. what you, i think i'd say that it's you know it's just kind of god-given talent and and mixed with a desire to take that and really be you know like ultra passionate i guess about what it is that i do you know and okay. you know just to kind of be honest with you and the listener, you know, I, I go through phases where I literally cannot stand my songs. And and I have to learn to renew that love and that desire for not the music. The music is something that that I you know, I never lose the love for that. But right. songs are like they're almost like some people call them siblings or excuse me, some people call them like children. Right. Um I think of more. I think of them more as siblings because of the fact that, like, you know, you get tired of them, but you still love them. You know. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, you always love them most of the time. I think. But right. Anyway, so that's that's how it is for me, and and it's all about for me taking songs that I you know have written and have loved and may love or have. Fell out, fallen out of love with, and finding ways to create new relationships with to where they they resonate with me in the moment that I'm at artistically. Right. I, I hope that's a good answer for what you're looking for. I, I if if not, then I'm doing my best. <laughs> no, no, no. It's great. It's great. Um, and I I love that you're you know your first. Um, response was that it was a God-given ta talent, and, and it is, and I'm I'm so glad that you recognize that and that you spoke about that. And um, I know, you know, a, a lot of a lot of artists that I have interviewed have also been worship leaders, and you know, you have that that quality, and you have that light about you, and it's you you pull people in, your voice pulls people in, but your your passion. And your emotions, I think, is what really, really, really drew me into each one of your songs. And you can't help but feel as you're listening, you know, along. And it was just, it was a great moment for me listening to each of your songs. And, and I want to thank you for that because not every artist has that kind of ability. There's several of them out there, don't get me wrong, and no offense to anyone. But you, I, I just think your talent is a little bit greater than than most you're you're definitely not average by any means your your talent is 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 superb and i'm i'm very fortunate that i get to talk to you today so thank you for taking the time um it's 100 percent my pleasure in the last i guess i don't know maybe five days that we've been emailing i really uh i really felt like you know i don't know this woman but i'm gonna like her and, <laughs> well i mean you just you you put off the same type of light that I think that you're talking about in your emails, and uh, that that type of stuff is it 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 doesn't take much to to recognize it. So you know, wow. the high five back to you, okay? Well, thank you. That that makes me now I'm the one with the big old smile on my face. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. We should all be smiling. It, definitely, it, it, definitely. As much as possible. Well, and. Yeah. You know, this this morning, you know, when when we had messaged each other, and um, you had just gotten back from you know services, and I was just getting ready to you know step foot into church with my you know my daughter, and um, man, 
today was just one of those days where, you know, you're listening to them sing and you just felt God's presence all around you. And I was just bawling my eyes out like all morning <laughs> during, during worship. It was like everything spoke to me. But, you know, then I come home and I'm listening to you and I'm just like, man, I'm just this emotional girl today. And it just, everything spoke to me. But, but your songs really are there. Your, your, maybe it's your tone. Cause you have that baritone and that tenor sound and you're just like, your your voice is addicting. I guess is how I have to say it. It really is. Like I could listen to your music all day long. Um, you know what? First of all, I want to high five you for recognizing, um, for being able to see. Um, and what what's with this high five analogy? <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. The main thing is well done as far as being able to to understand the difference between baritone, bass, and tenor. Because, um. Do you have a music background yourself? Yes, I do. I, I knew it. Anyway, <laughs> I used well, to play the baritone in marching band, just so you know. Okay, yeah. well, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I was like, man, she knows more than more than she's letting on. Um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, to, to kind of just address what you're talking about as far as, um, you know, uh, the church that I work with, um, mm-hmm. It's a it's a church in Lakeway, and uh, my role there is is really kind of ambiguous. It's really cool. I've 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 worked with them almost every Sunday for a year and a half, maybe two years now. Mm-hmm. Actually, and um, I'm kind of like the quiet um, behind the scenes music director. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I kind of I try my best to just fill the spaces that need to need to be filled. Does that make oh, okay. sense? Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, today they they asked me to come and lead, and I did, and it was it was beautiful. I I played a song called um, "This Is Amazing Grace." It's not Amazing Grace. It's this right. is Amazing Grace, and it was it was very powerful. And you know, just to circle back around to what you were talking about as far as being emotional last mm-hmm. time when I was on it, you know, you said a few minutes ago, or, I don't know, forty seconds ago, you said that you know an emotional girl. Well. Mm-hmm. Last night when I was playing that song, you know, I was allowing myself to be very vulnerable, and mm-hmm. I felt myself really, really open up and actually kind of tear up in the moment of that song simply because mm-hmm. of something that you know is unexplained to me. And you know, I we all have our, we all are we're just doing our best. Right. You know, we're just doing our best, and in that moment, it was really powerful. And so that to me was a really good, like, cathartic, healthy thing for me today. And um, so, you know, that, I don't know, I, just, I, I felt compulsion to, to talk about that. But um, No, that's great. That I, I, you know, that's why I brought up, you know, what I did, because when I, when I went today, I can't yeah. even, I can't, I can't even tell you, like, it was just so, it was so moving today. And then coming home and listening to your music, I mean, I was like, you know what, this is what it is. This is, so this is, you know, the main focus of what I had wanted to talk about, but so I'm sorry if this isn't what you had planned on talking to me about today, but no, I, re- I had, no, I had no preconceptions about any of this. I just knew that I was going to talk to a nice person and excited about that. Oh, well, well, thank you again. I, I, I am definitely enjoying, and I have been looking forward to our conversation since, you know, MJ introduced us via Facebook, which I think is great. And, I love that girl. I love that she she was just immediately like, you need to listen to this guy. He's great. And I was like, okay. And then I did, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I'm I'm so glad that she connected the two of us. Um, I, I, I will forever be grateful to her for that. Um, and then you, yourself, I want to talk about your work and the albums that you have out. You, you have three albums. Is the third one out, your latest one? Is it actually, has it been released yet or or not? I know it, it's... You know... It's it to be like one hundred percent honest with you. I actually, I have, I technically have four that. Oh, okay. Have, well, it's it's okay. It's okay because I I don't put this in my bio, but I'm just I'll just tell you the truth. Um, when I was uh when I was twenty, I think uh-huh. I had a friend, a friend of mine who passed away. He financed my first ex, my first experience in the studio. His name is Brian Ward actually died in a room with me, and I, that's another story. Oh, wow. Uh, but when he was when he was uh, 20, he decided we were the same age, kind of came out of high school and everything, a couple of years out, and decided that he, he wanted 
to take his savings and put me into a recording studio because he, he believed in me. And mm. uh, and so he we, we rented some studio time not knowing at all what we were doing. And I recorded 12 songs, like the first songs that I'd ever written. And, um, and uh, I called the record I Am. And uh, for a long time, I've been very actual, uh, very, excuse me, I've been actually kind of, kind of afraid to, to go back and, and, and do anything with it just because it's so rough and it's mm-hmm. so, you know, it, it's so young. Right. And as an artist, like, artist to artist for all the artists listening, and, you know, yourself included, we all know we want to be better, you know? Right. We want to be, we want to be that step above what we are, what we, what we perceive, you know, whatever it is, you know, all of that back to being human. And, um, so, um, so I've kind of, I kind of kept that tucked away. But what's out there on iTunes is an EP that I did in 2004. Right. Um, and then um, an EP that I did called Double Edge um, in 2005. And then, um, and I took a lot of time off and started working in 2008 on a very extensive project that I recently, uh, it's about 33 years ago, so it's not mm-hmm. recent. I recently finished that, whatever, and um, I, I finished that, and I have that mastered and ready to be released, but I decided this year that what I wanted to do was to make it happen to where I release and put out two albums in one year, because, I mean, that's a lot of time, even if right. it's years, for somebody who, like, really creates and really, you know, for any artist that, that, that cares and is passionate, they're going to make your stuff constantly. I mean, right. What you want, you know? So, so what I'm going to do this year is I really would like to um, put out two new records in the same year. And that's my goal. And okay. so one will be this, this record that you um, that you referred to. It'll be my, my first full length record. And okay. then, um, and then, um, and then another that is full of a bunch of songs that I'm currently very connected and in love with, you know. So, and that kind of goes back to what we were talking about, as far or I was talking about, as far as being, you know, in a state of kind of bliss with a song, you know. Right. But it's, not, it's it's just like love, like writing a song or a piece of art or whatever. But you have that kind of it's a kind of like honeymoon phase, you know. Mm-hmm. And it can last for a long time, but like. I really don't, care. you know, it doesn't matter who you are. I think it kind of, you know, it. even if it's a great song that you're just like, that's a great song. It's just, right. You have to find new ways to make it new to you. Right. So, this being said, um, I wanted to do too, so this um, former record, this one that just recently was finished, um, is, you know, is new alongside something that is really new. All and right. So that's, that's what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'm excited about it, really excited about it. I'm Absolutely. also um, working on some other things as well, producing some artists and uh, doing some really exciting things, but I don't want to jump ahead. <laughs> no, it's all it's I'm not all careful. Good. We just keep blabbing. So. Right, right. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and you've also, you've produced an award-winning uh, video for your single Make Believe. So I, I wanted to know, you know, what is it, what is it like for you, you know, doing that as well as, you know, songwriting and singing and then you're, you know, producing a video like, is it completely different? Is it a completely different kind of fun? Is, a, is it harder? Like, what, what is it for you? What is the experience like for you? Um, the experience for me generally is a very shy one. Um, I am a shy person. Oh. And I, I'm, I'm just going to say that and pause and let that kind of like set in because I want to be, I want to be really clear I decided before we talked that I was going to be as honest with you as possible. Right. And, you know, just honest. I mean, there's no right. option. It's just like, you're either honest or you're not. Right, exactly. You know? So, so for me, it's, it, it always takes a bit of, like, you know, reaching down and, and being as courageous as possible. Mm-hmm. But some things come more naturally than others. And, you know, 
production is something that I've always loved, and I've produced all of my albums myself. Okay. Um, every time I went in and worked with a producer that was not you know, directly related to something I was doing or myself, it never worked out the way, it never worked out in something that really, really was a hard lesson that I learned. Right. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that I don't want to work with strictly producers in the future. I, I'm completely open to that, but I haven't found the right marriage um, for that. But, right. you know, well, I, I think you know, I, kind of swirling around your question, if, if you want to, like, uh, sharpen the sword and, like, show me where you want it to go, I'm... I'm no, it's, it's it's fine. I just, you know, as as somebody who, you know, does different things, like for me, I'll do on-camera interviews, I'll do, you know, the audio ones, and then I do my, you know, my articles, or I'll just do, an, a, you know, an event. And for me, I love them all, and I'm passionate about each different task that I do, but they're so completely different for me that I can't pick a favorite. So I guess that's what I'm kind of getting at is like, do you have a favorite part of your music side that you like to do? Is there, you know, one specific thing that you just prefer over others? Or do you just like them all equally in different ways? That's a good question. Um, um, so I think that I think that the most fun for me is, and this is going to sound really spoiled, but it's really true, uh, the most fun for me is whenever I'm in a space that sounds good, like a, like mm -hmm. a big like hall or a cathedral, and I'm playing live, and I have a set of songs that are really resonating with me, and I'm able to like just emote through technology and the things that I'm, I'm you know, to translate that live kind of music experience. That right. to me is, the, is kind of the epitome of, of of like what I love, but it's a different kind of joy and fun with people to work with other artists and go in and kind of take their songs and right. you know it's like a piece of clay and you know move it around and say what do you think of this shape right. and you know we communicate and go from there. But yeah, I think being in some of my best memories, looking back for my my, I would say the last ten years would be would be um, being in some beautiful, large, you know, sometimes churches, but, mm -hmm. you know, the time, like, large, like, halls or, you know, amphitheaters and things like that that just have incredible sound and being able to, you know, play live right. in that context. So, so yeah, that's, I think that's my answer to that question. Well, that's good. I, I love that. And for me, I still don't really have an answer for mine. I just... I love it all, and each each of the experiences that I've had have been so unique and so different, and it's just like, I can't pick one. It's like, I, I want to say that they're all my favorite. <laughs> Although, writing an article last minute because I'm late and I have like 18 to go, which is my current status right now. I have like 18 articles to write. Um, huh? You have 18 artists that you're writing articles about? Right now, yeah, I have, I'm behind. I have, um, well... Wow. That's a lot. Well, okay, here, here I'm here's why. Time. I'm just saying, like, that, that seems like a lot. It, well, it, it is, and typically with our magazine, because we, we feature, you know, we feature a lot of, of new and up-and-coming talent, and the reason why we do that is, you know, Tommy and I just have this passion where we just want to, you know, bring attention to people who are amazing and gifted and talented that aren't in the top 40. Now, of course, you know, if we get to do our, you know, interviews with, with the top 40 artists and people that are super well known, like, you know, the band parents, if we're going to do them, but we, we want to just bring to the spotlight these amazing artists that are not getting the regular radio play every day. And, you know, because there is so much more talent out there than what, what people see. And, you know, the next generations that are coming up, you know, we have a lot of YouTubers and we have, you know, the Netflix crowd and, you know, the Hulu and, you know, the, the Sirius XM radio and all that stuff. So, you know, and people are, you know, people are reaching out on Twitter and on social media and they're finding new music that way. So our magazine is just a way to bring some of that new music out into the open for everybody to see. And, you know, so we're based in Nashville and I'm currently in California 
And mm. getting to do on-camera interviews is very difficult when I'm here in California. And a lot of the artists are about, you know, out in Nashville. So what I've been doing is as I can, as I can travel, um, I, we go out, I go out there and then we just are booked solid. Um, you know, I'll do three, four interviews a day on camera and then I've got all those articles to write to go with it. So yeah, I'm backed up a little bit and I go back to Nashville on Tuesday and I've already got a crazy amount of, you know, interviews planned. So I'm going to be writing my little fingers to the bone here pretty soon, <laughs> but, um, it's worth I, it and I love it. Yeah. You know, I'll just say this on behalf of, of all of the, sorry, a fire truck just went by me. It's all good. <laughs> I hope they're all right. Um, so on behalf of like all of the artists, I'm just gonna like take this moment to say this uh, for what it's worth. On behalf of all of the artists that like don't, that aren't, well, I can't say that either. I was gonna say aren't looking for major label backing. Mm-hmm. You know, in the right context, I'm sure that's a good thing. And, and right. It could be a great thing, but on behalf of indie artists that are just doing their thing, you know, whether it's whomever, we appreciate right. and thank you so much for taking the time um, to, uh, you know, step out and, and find us and, uh, and you know, pull us out of wherever we're at, you know, all around the world, I guess. So thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. You know, it really is just our pleasure. And it's been our dream for such a long time to just be able to, you know, pull out these these great people, these artists, talents from, you know, and not just music. I mean, we 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 search out comedians and, you know, authors and, you know, anybody we can find who's just great at what they do. And they're just so, you know, positive. And we just we want to spin everything positive. Like we refuse to print anything negative. We refuse to do anything like that. This is just a really positive place where people can come and be entertained. And the fact that you agreed to be a part of this, you know, we, we've only, we only launched in September. So we're very, very new. We're in our very first year. Um, and, and this is, it's been such a great experience. And with artists, you know, such as yourself, it's been so, so much fun. And I, I, I love, and I was telling everybody on Facebook this morning, I already felt like you and I were, were friends because we've been messaging each other all the time. And not every artist that I interview connects with me in that way. But when they do, it's like so thrilling for me. And it's just, I feel like, man, I'm doing my job. This is great. Um, I interviewed uh, Stephen Schreiner not too long ago, and I posted his article. And he, you know, he, he texted me and he was just like, thank you so much. And it's, that's when I know I'm like, you know what? I love what I'm doing. And it, it like, that's what drives me to keep going so much like you, you know, you're performing in front of a live audience in a beautiful hall and you know, the sound is great. And it just, how, how that speaks to you is how this speaks to me and how you, you have, have reached out to me several times and I just, I appreciate that. And you've, you've made it real. You're a real person. You know what I mean? You're not just, okay, I'm an artist who has to get an interview done and out of the way. I'm going to treat you like you're an actual person. And, and I appreciate that very much because that, that means a lot. The the actual personal connection means a lot. And I appreciate it. Uh, well, that's great. I mean, that's great. I, I'm, you know, I'm honestly a little bit speechless, but I'm I'm really I'm I'm just glad to hear that. Like, I'm glad to hear that that uh, it's not just you know folks like me who, you know, artists like myself that are that are doing like the indie thing and mm-hmm. you know happily doing the indie thing are are like there's there's other elements of all of this you know with yeah. like you, said, you know acting and comedians and, mm-hmm. and like it kind of breathes it it almost like regenerates. It. Right. And uh, yeah, to, to hear you, you know, so excited about what you're doing, like that's that's fantastic. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing. I think maybe that's why, you know, if I guess, I say that that's probably why, you know, we were so like dope to like write emails and be like, right. oh, share. You know, here's here's my Google Drive and yeah, and this and this and oh, I don't want to miss this because I'm you know I want to talk about it this and this. Right. <laughs> Well, because it's passion and it's good and it's real and it's honest and it sounds to me like you're in a very similar place 
you're, you're being authentic with yourself and it's good and and it's you know stuff this stuff kind of like ends up you know on a magnetic so absolutely absolutely and you yeah. know with 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 all of that you know you're just your personality and everything, every, who you are has been really positive. I've been watching you on Facebook and, you know, um, getting getting to know you a little bit through the social media as well. And I saw a picture, and I know this is so completely off what we've been talking about, but I saw this picture of you with your niece, Emma, and you were you were playing for her for the first time. And I believe it was your sister, it's your sister, Jill, who had the baby girl. I, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I love this line of questioning. This, this is great. Okay, well... I I love personal stuff, but that picture is so precious, so completely precious, and I can't even tell you how much it made me smile when I saw it. And what was that moment like for you playing for her for the first time? Well, I mean, for me, you know, I'm not the photographer, so mm -hmm. I I can speak from what was going on, and obviously you're asking that, but I'll say it, it was. I have this is my third um, niece and nephew. Okay, from my mm -hmm. sister, and I love her, and I love them, Romolo and Stella and Amelia. They're all Amelia is the new baby, and uh -huh. they're great little kiddos. And I, you know, like I, I'm, I'm thankful that I get to be the cool uncle. You know, so right. <laughs> take them out and like ride motorcycles with with them, and you know, do fun stuff. You know, anyway. But to get back to what you're, you're asking about, as far as that moment, you know, I what I did with Stella. Stella is the oldest. Okay. Now, and when Stella was a baby, I would sit down and I would put the guitar like very, you know, not too close to her, but right. you know, close enough to where she could really kind of absorb the moment and play and just watch her face and just just see like what her physiognomy did, you know, just mm -hmm. how she responded to it. And it was amazing to me as she got a little older, around like one or two, you know, see how the way that she she responded to sounds and you know gentle sounds right. and fast fun sounds and, and all of these things and so I thought it was and that was literally what the picture says it was the first time that I ever it was, it was the second time that I've seen that baby I was there mm -hmm. and she's approximately a month and a half old I believe but sorry I don't know the date but That's and um, I will once she gets a little older and <laughs> I'm not such a bad uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but uh, um, yeah. So, so yeah, it was, it was a really, re it was a, it was a really moment. And you know, I want to interject this. Uh, the photographer um, is is my partner, is my the love of my life. Her name is Gina Marino, and it's spelled J E A N A M A R. I N O mm -hmm. media, and she does everything from paintings to photography to, I mean, across the board, resin. She does uh, wow. resin glasses. And, you know, I know it's not, it's a plug, but it's, it's no, it's all good. I love that. <laughs> and, and she's she's phenomenal. Like you know, I encourage you to, if you wanted to find another artist, if you're looking for number twenty for your list, right? You talk to but uh, you know just just want to say that she took that picture and uh and the amazing thing is that she's actually i would say only about four or five months into this process of becoming a photographer she's taken pictures of her, you know most of her life because you know we've all had problems with cameras right. on it she's just now learning the actual art of you know all of this, the, the nuances that go along with making the picture beautiful right and, well and all that so. and i just saw she um she had posted on your on your page i think and it was a, a beautiful picture of this purple flower and i can't i'm so not that kind of girl where i know the names of all these flowers i'm just oh, not I that mean, good i can tell you a rose and a carnation and like a pink stargazer lily because they're my favorite but i cannot tell you any other type of flower and she posted a, a beautiful picture of a flower um this morning on i think it was this morning on your facebook and it it was just, it was really sweet in how she was like, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't need flowers to be bought. She just takes pictures of them. And, um, and then I saw somebody else talking to her about lenses. So I figured, oh, okay, maybe she's kind of like getting into the photography deal. But I did not pay attention to the, the photography, 
name on the on the picture of you and your niece. So I apologize to her, but great job. I love it. You know, Facebook is such a like it, it's so easy to like because there's it, social media has so much stuff coming at you. You know, right? It's easy to miss that stuff. So of course, no worries. But you know, she she's the one who took the picture. She took a bunch of them that day, and um, uh, you know, we had a really a really fun time actually. And you know, that picture is beautiful. It's it's really sweet mm-hmm. because you know, if I can take a minute just to describe the picture, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, leaning over my guitar while Amelia, who is um, two months old at the very most, is laying on her back on the couch, and I'm I'm fixing out almost like that painting on the Sistine Chapel with my finger out, and she's grabbing my my finger with her mm-hmm. teeny little, and like she's holding on to it just ever so gently, and it's it's like this, it just kind of like really define that moment of uh, connection between the two of us. And, and, and you know, of course, it could yeah. be just an accident, baby reflexes where she's reaching up. And, but, you know, one wants to believe that that's something right. that is something indelible for her, you know? Definitely. At least I hope. But it doesn't, you know, who knows? Well, it's, it's, it's definitely spot. a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> moment. And I love that it's in black and white, and it just really captures the emotion. I, I, I think that... You know, she did a really, really, really great job with this with this photo, and um, I, I'm definitely like, man, I love it. I wish I had something like that with my kids and me. And sadly, I do not, but it's okay. <laughs> um, yours is great, and I'll just cherish cherish that you shared this with everybody. And I think it's great that you are, you know, you you do share your life with with others, and it's and it's fun. And I'm trying to see if she actually posted the name of the the flower here that she took of. I am not seeing it, but I really wish I knew what kind of flower that was. I'm so bad. I don't know the name, but it's it's gorgeous. I'm looking at it right now. I actually had to go back and pull it up because I was hoping that there was a name to it so that I don't feel like such an idiot. But let's just say you you know that I don't know everything. In fact, what was it, what was it that we were texting about? There's something going on in Austin, Texas right now. Some, some big, huge oh, event, yes. the music oh, event. What South, is that? It's, it's South by Southwest. It's a... Uh... It's an, it's an annual music festival that comes into Austin and comes and drives the people that live here absolutely bonkers. But it's, you know, it's good for the economy. And Great. I'd like to think it's good for the music scene. Um, it's kind of debatable, but that's a lot, you know, that's, a, I don't know. It's it's a lot. It's kind of a um, a deeper subject to go into. It's become something that I think that it was intended to be something a little bit more. I don't know. Um, really, don't know. And <laughs> I, I don't want to. I'm not sure how to answer that question. Stuff myself was has always been good to me, and I like it. But it's what it is now is not really my thing. Oh, okay. Keep me in trouble, but I don't care. At least it's honest. No, I'm wondering if it's like so. Is it is it a lot of radio stations? Is it like CRS in Nashville? Well, it's like the Cool Kids Club comes into Austin, and all the cool kids from acting to whatever go and see the quote unquote cool bands and be cool together. And it's great, I guess, but it doesn't really make me jump up and want to run to it. Um, okay. <laughs> so that's so it, the truth. it it has it has a different purpose than what you are what than what you're seeking at this point. <laughs> or there's there if if I was really here's the thing what it boils down to is it's a bunch of people in one place that are looking for fame and fortune. That is exactly what it is. Uh, okay. You know, you can quote me on that because it's just the true like intention of it. Right. And that's good if that's what you want. I mean, if that's what you want, you you know, that's what you go for it. Do right. It. Up right. myself with good medium for people that are just, you know, look at every other musician around them like competitors and mm-hmm. and that's way to describe it. Yet they're all shaking your hand. Right. Smiling, and and that whole game and, and for me I actually had this conversation last night with another artist. I was saying the, the type of people that I would like to be surrounded with are people that 
I want to create with, and we we look at the right. art that we're making as something that, how do I put it? I guess um, it's something that is, we both can benefit from. Right, like, build each other up. and Spiritually, mm-hmm. as well as, you know, if you want to go that far with it, as well as, like, financially. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be some kind of, like, you know, I, I don't know, something ugly. And well, I feel like uh, a lot of times it can be that whenever that's your, your main goal as opposed to, to like, yeah. really you know, dig in spite of one another. Well, and, and, you know, sadly, that's what it's come down to a lot. And, you know, um, I, we work, um, Center Stage Magazine works with a, a group in Nashville. It's called WIM Nashville, and it's called, you know, it stands for Women in Music. And, you know, uh-huh. this group of seven artists who are so talented, and they're not all country, they're all different genres, and they get up on stage with each other and they sing with each other. They sing their own songs. They, you know, sing stuff together. Then, you know, every every show that they do, they bring in a new female artist. And it's it's about, you know, destroying that stereotype that women are, you know, you know, just competing against one another. They're there to build each other up and, uh, you know, to help each other out and, you know, make it so that it's like, you know what, this music business is good for everybody. It doesn't have to just be this one or this one. We don't have to compete with each other. We don't have to be ugly. Just because we're women doesn't mean we can't work well together. You know, right. so... And I think that that's fantastic. I, I, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, and just to kind of circle back around to what I was just talking about as far mm-hmm. as stuff, I'll say this. And I'm, I guess I'm saying this from a diplomatic standpoint. Mm-hmm. I do know a lot of artists that, that I really respect that are regional, local, even national, that come here and they're a part of this conference and they talk about the future of music and, and, and all of that. And they really work together and they, put, they right. play great shows, some of them. And right. that's awesome. But I think that what the, the magnetic pull of South by Southwest at its core is, is something that is is not what you're talking about, and mm-hmm. so so that's my opinion, I guess. Right, but, right. But what did you say that that series was called that, that that you were telling me about just a moment ago? The 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 group that we're working with, they're called Wim Nashville. Wim Nashville. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it online somewhere? It it is online. They have Facebook and Twitter. Um, and you know, I'm I'm friends with the two founders of that through working together with them. We've formed a partnership and it's just really great now every time I'm in Nashville I, I try to get together with the girls because they're just so much fun and I love being around people who are positive and you know um and these women are all they're all they're all faith-based too so which is great for me um but I just I yeah I love them it's Wim Nashville and um they do these live showcases you know um they they started streaming online for those who can't actually physically attend a show now which is really awesome and and I just I'm I've been wa- we've been watching them grow from the beginning and it's just it's just a really positive movement and I just think it's really great it's really great and you know um I'd really love to see this kind of thing happening you know all across you know the world because it really is you know special and and so positive and I think we we're lacking a lot of that especially right now of course we're all in political mode right there's a ton of people who are in political mode and you see a bunch of ugliness going on in the world and it's like, wow, I think everybody just needs to take a step back and realize our main goal here is to get along with one another and to work together and create a happy environment. So, um, so I, again, appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today because it totally breaks us away from, from all the negativity that's out there. So, so thank you again for, for that. I, I love this. Well, you know, there's, you know, yeah, you're yeah, you're touching on a huge subject, and you I know, know, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. It's good. It's it's all fine. It's good. Um, you know, whenever you were talking, just like you were talking, you were kind of, you were speaking to um, what you were saying our main goal, and I think that's an interesting thing to actually just think about because, you know, everybody has their own their own kind of thing that drives them and and I think that we're all I don't know I think we're all just kind of looking to be we're we're kind of looking to express ourselves I guess 
And, right. you know, I think a murderer expresses himself by murdering people. And that's that's his joy. And it's not a good joy, but it's right. whatever it is to him. And I think that what's in your heart is what I think truly comes out in the end. And um, and so, you know, what you're doing is your expression of, of, of what you want to portray in the world. And that's the definition of who you are. Right. You know, so, and, and, you know, everybody's different. I mean, every listener, if anyone listens to this, they're going to have their own, you know, their own kind of answer in themselves. And I, I think in a moment like this, it's good to kind of stop and say, you know, what is that moment? You know, because yes, right. we're, we're in a political kind of, you know, tornado of nuttiness, you know, I mean, yeah. you can't escape it. You know, that's one part of all of it, you know, and it's like, right. It's it's tough to I mean it's almost impossible I think with the complexity of human nature the way that it is now to to somehow get at the heart of of what it is that we are and and what it is that is good for us and right. I don't know I certainly don't have the answers but I am absolutely in dialogue and that's a good thing so right right and I just I. I, I you know, have conversations about it and then see what, 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 uh, if any action that one should take comes out of it. So, anyway. right, right, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I want to say, I know that bringing up the political and even bringing up, you know, spiritual, religious, anything, you know, some people kind of are like, oh, okay, I don't want to listen to this. And, and that's fine. You know, everybody has their own opinions and everybody has their own right to their own feelings, which I think is great. But I'm one of these people who I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop being me and I'm not going to stop talking about things I want to talk about for the sake of somebody else feeling like they're a victim because of what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm not, I don't mean disrespect at all. They can choose to listen or they can choose to walk away. Um, But I'm not going to stop being who I am and center stage magazine is not going to stop promoting new artists and we're not going to stop, you know, talking about, you know, faith. I mean, especially for me, that's what for me gets me, gets me through each day. And, you know, we all have hard times and we all struggle and it's, you know, it, this is, this is me, this is us, this is who we are. And I, I, I praise God every day for the things that, you know, the blessings in my life and the lessons in my life and the challenges that, I have to get through because that's who that's what's going to make me who I am in the future. And, you know, I don't look at these challenges and get angry. I get frustrated, (laughs) but you know, and I am going to, you know, stand back and praise God. And that's why when I heard your voice and after worship this morning, I was like, okay, I have to talk about this because this is weighing on my heart and this is so important to me to get out. And that's why I wanted to speak about that first. So for all the listeners out there who, um, are, are offended by me. I am sorry. I do not mean personal offense to anyone, but I'm not going to stop talking about the things that drive me. You don't have to apologize for anything. I mean, like, I don't know. Don't apologize. Mm-hmm. I know. Apologize. <laughs> like, there's absolutely no need to, because at the end of the day, no one wants to feel sorry or feel right. bad or just anyone else for who they are, you know? I mean, so just be you. Yeah. I know. And you know what really is, was it really a, a, a real apology anyways, because I just caught myself. I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to stop. That's really kind of not an apology. So <laughs> I mean, my bad. Um, no, it was, it was a, it was a disclaimer. Yes. Yeah, there, there oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh. I knew I was going to have so much fun talking with you. And by the way, I know we've been on the phone forever and I know that it's Sunday and you've probably got a lot of stuff you got to, you got to take care of and I'm just here taking advantage of your time. Um, But before we go, is there anything else? Is there anything else that you want to share with, with everybody? I'm, I'm definitely going to be including um, the links to your music page, your social media and all of that um, on the article that I write, but is there anything else that you want to share um, with anyone? Well, um, I don't, I don't really think offhand. I mean, I wrote some notes and I have them sitting next to me in my truck, but I think at the end of the day, it's kind of like we just had a conversation and I know. you know, you <laughs> take what you want from it, and 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 the listener takes what they want, and hopefully it's it's entertaining and good and you know informative at the same time, and so you know go with it, run with it, and and have a good day, everybody.
Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And please, as soon as you have anything that you want us to help you promote or anything like that, or you just feel like, you know, you've got great news to share or whatever it is, let us know and we can do another interview or we can, you know, sit down and do an on-camera conversation or maybe we can catch some live footage at one of your shows, which would be great. Um, it, would, it, would, it would be so much fun. And um, definitely I'm interested in seeing, you know, um, her name is Gina, right? Is it Gina or Jenna? It's Gina Marino. Okay. I want to see more of Gina's work. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's not hard to find her. If you go to my page and you okay. click on her, her, you know, you click on the link, you know, to any one of those pictures that you were referring to earlier, okay. you'll, uh, you'll take you right to what she's doing. And she has an art page that, I don't know. She's she's doing so much to keep up with. But well, that's great. That's great. Well, I will definitely be be looking at more of her work. And um, I don't get to Texas too often, yeah. but maybe I know some people there. So uh, maybe. Well, yeah. we're... Hey, you come to Austin. You 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 definitely have a place to stay. You come stay with us. Oh my gosh, you're great. I I I love you guys. Oh my gosh. Um, now you just got to tell her that you said that because I have a whole bunch of witnesses who are going to be listening to this. So I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, you told her she could stay. So. <laughs> no, I stand by it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to, I won't back out. You just, <laughs> you're recorded or whatever. Don't worry about it. All right. All right. No, I'm just playing with you. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and definitely keep doing what you're doing. And um, I'd be very interested to hear that first album you were talking about, I Am, because I think the yeah. story behind it is incredibly beautiful and touching. And I honestly think what a great thing for you to have and to hear and to be able to look back and see where you've come, you know, look, look at where you were and see how far you've come. And I don't think for one minute, I'm just throwing my two cents, but I, mm -hmm. I don't think for one minute, Brian would be um, upset with you taking some of those songs and breaking them down to their core and redoing them how they, how you would do them today. I think he'd... I tell you what, let, I actually love that idea. Let's do this. Let's get back together in about five months, maybe six months, um, right. when I'm when I'm ready to put out these two records. Okay. And let's do another interview that's kind of focused more on, on, on just those things. And let's cross that bridge when we get to it. You know what All I mean? All right, and absolutely. That's maybe maybe a project after the next stepping stone. Right. I think that would be great. I would love, love to do that. A really great suggestion to, to go back to this. Because, yeah, he's, he was a good good young man. I have a lot of love for him and his family. Well, that's good. And, and I just, I don't know, I just, I just got overwhelming feelings that I needed to retouch on that real fast. And I don't know why, but it was like it was jumping out at me like, okay, you need to talk about this one more time. We can't let it go. So <laughs> so thanks for, for, you know, dealing with me. I appreciate it. But um, all right, well, you have a great rest of your day. And, and, you know, thank you for all of your time. And it's been such a great conversation. And I know we're going to keep in touch because, you know, well, you made the mistake of, you know, texting me and friending me on Facebook. So now you're stuck with me forever. So I'm sorry about that, but you're just going to have to like that. <laughs> Well, no, I, I think it'll be I think it'll be an easy thing to roll with. So no worries. Absolutely. I, <laughs> All right. Well, you take care and tell tell Gina we love her work and uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to her in the near future too. Well, thank you, Miss. Oh, thank you. And have a good day. You, I appreciate it. No problem. No problem. Have a, have a wonderful day and uh, just be safe out there. We'll do. Bye bye. All right, bye.